Hi guys, in today's episode of Alpha Tech, we will discuss about the new rocket that uses new energy somehow better than SpaceX's Starship and colonizing Mars. And it even provides a faster and safer flight for this difficult mission. Not only Mars, but also many further celestial bodies in space. Sounds crazy, right? So let's jump right in and find out. What is that rocket and its energy source? Why is this rocket so much better than Starship? Would SpaceX want to use it in the future? Human history has developed through many periods. Along with that, energy sources are always discovered and changed to suit each stage. We can point out several typical energy sources like coal, oil, solar energy, wind energy, water energy, and more. But there's another type of energy that is also more potential and powerful than these sources of energy, which is nuclear energy. Like many other aspects, energy issues also have a huge impact on the rocket industry. Currently, most rockets still use chemical substances as fuel, like kerosene, hydrogen, or more recently, methane. So, nuclear energy can enter this field? The answer is absolutely possible. Many companies are researching this energy to apply to their rockets. One of those companies is Pulsar Fusion. This is a UK-based startup company specializing in engine development, including engines using nuclear fuel. They are developing the largest practical nuclear fusion rocket engine ever built. Currently, this company is building a nuclear fusion chamber called Direct Fusion Drive, DFD. It's 8 meters long and is capable of containing hot plasma with temperatures up to hundreds of millions of degrees Celsius, equivalent to or even hotter than that of the sun. This will be where nuclear fission reactions take place. In general principle, it is similar to fusion on the sun, specifically creating and confining an amount of extremely hot plasma in electromagnetic field to create high-speed thrust for rockets and spacecraft. We'll clarify this process more clearly. First, the fission process will take place to create plasma. Unlike the sustained fusion reaction to generate power like traditional fusion methods, this new fusion engine will use fission energy to create high-energy plasma. The fuel will be put into the combustion chamber to participate in this fission reaction. Fuel atoms will be split into smaller nuclei called ions. This process will create a huge amount of energy and heat, turning matter into plasma like in the sun. Plasmas consist of ionized particles, which serve as a self-sustaining fuel source for the engine. The high speed of ionized particles will create an extremely powerful source of energy that can generate thrust for rockets. Once created, the plasma is then confined and controlled by the electromagnetic force of the electromagnetic field coils to contain and maintain its integrity. When plasmas are launched through the engine nozzle, the above energy will generate thrust to push the rocket forward. Meanwhile, the plasma's heat will also be utilized to create power to supply the remaining systems on rockets and spacecraft. This is an outstanding strength because it can optimize fuel to help the rocket increase both speed and performance. Regarding fuel, this pulsar fusion system will use helium-3. This is a fuel with a great potential and efficiency, especially for fusion reactions. Helium-3 has the advantage of low radioactivity and safety and produces less waste than other fuels like deuterium or tritium. This is also an abundant resource that can be found on celestial bodies such as the moon. If we can exploit them for use in fission reactions, it'll not only serve to operate nuclear engines, but it'll also be a solution to the Earth's energy problem when traditional raw material sources are gradually exhausted. Therefore, it creates enormous potential for clean and sustainable energy production models in the future. With this new system, Pulsar Fusion can create powerful rockets that can achieve flight speeds of up to 500,000 miles an hour, or 805,000 kilometers an hour, and specific impulses of 10,000 to 15,000 seconds. Thanks to that insane power, nuclear fusion rockets can reduce a lot of space travel. For example, the time to reach Saturn's moon, Titan, will only be about two years instead of 10 years like now, or beyond when we have to send a spacecraft with a mass of about one ton to Pluto, and that'll only take about four years. As for Earth's neighbor Mars, at the closest distance of about 54.6 million kilometers or 33.6 million miles, currently it'll take us about six to eight months to reach this planet. But with its new nuclear fusion rocket, Pulsar Fusion is confident that the journey to Mars will be cut in half to only about two to three months. Currently, Pulsar Fusion is still strongly cooperating with other organizations to develop its project. They're conducting phase three of manufacturing the initial test unit. Pulsar Fusion will aim to conduct static tests in 2024 and then an in-orbit demonstration IOD of the technology in 2027. This will certainly be one of the new solutions that can compete with current Mars projects, including SpaceX's Mars colonization project. 
Starship is a rocket that uses methane as fuel. Starship's Raptor engine is still one of the most powerful engines in the world. Each Raptor 2 engine currently has a thrust of up to 230 tons or 510,000 pounds. During the second integrated test flight, the 33 engines in the Super Heavy generated more than 7,000 tons of thrust, an unprecedented thrust record in history. In the coming time, they will also release many new generations that promise to create even more crazy performances. But reaching Mars may still be very difficult for this rocket. According to Elon Musk, at the closest distance between Earth and Mars mentioned above, Starship still takes up to six months to fly to the Red Planet. Obviously, that's long enough to raise many challenges for both crewed and uncrewed missions. SpaceX will need to solve many problems, like technology and human resources, to control the flight throughout the journey, solve problems with fuel sources, food, daily living problems, psychological problems with astronauts, and more. So far, those are still extremely difficult problems. At that time, nuclear-powered rockets would be a potential solution. Shortening the journey time between the two planets will solve all of the above challenges. High speed and continuous frequency will be extremely important for a difficult mission like colonizing Mars, helping us more quickly establish self-sufficient bases and cities on this planet. So, is this a threat to the SpaceX Starship? Maybe not completely. SpaceX also has reasons to choose methane for its rockets. Methane's a cheap, clean fuel source. It's easy to produce and has high combustion efficiency. It's also suitable for a Mars mission, which has abundant resources including carbon dioxide and groundwater ice, the raw materials to create methane to resupply the Starship. In terms of flight frequency, SpaceX is also making crazy plans to launch thousands of Starships to bring roughly 1 million tons to Mars every year in the future. That flight frequency will be completely sufficient to build a base on Mars. In addition, SpaceX is also trying to increase the power of their rockets by constantly researching and upgrading new engine versions. It will help them continue to increase the power of their rockets and shorten the time to reach Mars as currently estimated. As for nuclear energy, this may become a potential option for SpaceX to consider and apply. If it's possible to apply such a powerful energy source to the world's largest rocket, that's not a bad idea. Of course, combining energy and Starship will need to be considered extremely carefully because although powerful, nuclear energy will still have many risks regarding safety, development costs, legal barriers, technical challenges, and more. But nothing's impossible with Elon and the team. Colonizing Mars will be one of the most important missions for humans in this century. There will be many challenges awaiting, but talented brains will never give up and continue to move forward. The appearance of nuclear rocket and Starship are typical examples. We also need more time to wait for rocket companies to prove the efficiency of their ideas before putting them in operation. But we can be confident that we'll have the right steps on the path to exploring the vast expanses of space. That's all for today's episode. We hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Please let us know what you think in the comments section below. Your feedback's very important to us and helps us make better videos for you. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time.